I told you that there are two things I saw in Jesus Christ that can storm the weather. Number one is a transformational leadership approach, an approach in life that wants to see others fulfill their dreams. And in helping others fulfill their dreams, little do you know that you have really a greater dream. That is transformational leadership. And the church needs it. It is a leadership that, that sets examples to people. The church needs it. Second one is servant leadership. That is a, is a leadership that takes the place of people to cover for their weakness. That's a servant leader. A leader who will give people assignment to do and he will stand behind them and inform them and back them up until they fulfill it. And if you look at that, it's the intersection of uh, transmissional leadership and servant leadership. I haven't gone through a lot of information about that today, uh, last week. I want to remind you on the four factors, well, five, five factors, that can enable your leadership so that you can have impact. Number one is innovation. Number two is collaboration. Number three is cooperation. Number four is stakeholders engagement. And number five is creativity. Now let me say something to you. You may be saying that this, this statement, are they, uh, do they relate to me? Yes, I, I help you understand how that relates into marriage. <laughs> innovation it's not continuing to do the same thing and trying to improve on it. No, this is departure from norm. I will talk a little bit about innovation because we're going to look at a case study today in the Bible and a few number of references. Innovation involves new ideas applied. First of all, it involves derivative of new, uh, 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 of new um, uh, ideas, departing from none, and focusing on something and inventive. And then applying the new derivatives that you have seen that can work, not trying to patch your old system that is not, is not adequate for the, the, the context. And the result of that is that it, it, it improves your product of service. It improves your product of services. And also improves your organizational practices and strategies. Let me say something to you. When in an organization a new thing is, 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 is invented, or innovated. You see exuberance in everybody. Everybody wants to add to it. Everybody wants to see it. Everybody wants to look at what they can do to, to make it work. And you need that sort of spirit in industry next year. It's an industry that lacks that is getting towards extinction. A church that lacks that will soon vanish. Members will soon leave the place. One of the things about innovation is that it leads to major competitive advantages. And those are the things I was saying to you. When you innovate, you become a kingpin. Your product is always advertising itself. People are always talking about it. So there's a lot of competitive advantages that you find in there. But you see, this involves or entails a leader who can depart from the norm. A leader who can think beyond traditional business practices. When I say business, I also mean church. Every leader of every institution, whether government, whether politics, whether industry, whether church, you must now know that you must examine your old ways of doing things that are being challenged and be ready to, to go beyond your traditional practices so that you can catch up, you can leverage all challenges to the advantage of the, of the organization you represent without affecting the values and the valor of the organization. You must know this. And you will see that in the Bible in a short while. 
And what, the, what that will give to you as an organization is increased economic performance and it will improve the quality of your workplace. Of course, we see that the environment of our workplace now, it is COVID ready. <laughs> In church, we have marks on our carpet, which formerly, that would look like an eyesore. I'm preaching and I saw blue marks on my carpet. I would call the leaders and say, what's my way about it? What's wrong with this? And I, I came to the, to the church, if it was uh, last year this time, and I saw all these barriers in the church, and I saw, you know, they, they have divided the entrance so that you have entrance and you have exit another way. I would have said that, are you trying to inf infringe the human rights of the people to fellowship together, to walk freely in the church? of the living God, I would have said that. However, COVID-19 has cautioned us and restructured us and we have to adjust. Now, let me say this to you. Haven't we adjusted to COVID-19 order of doing things that now people will come in orderly into the church and when they finish the church, we have to stand them up row by row and they will go out orderly? Is that not a good thing to do? <laughs> Has that not improved our quality of workplace? It has. Do we intend to stop that when we finish COVID-19? No. The only thing we will stop in COVID, after COVID-19 is gone is that we will not be blocking our nose anymore and we'll be still sitting together. However, the order that COVID-19 introduced has become an enhancer of health and safety. You, I don't know what your industry is. This is what you need to do. You need to think about this. That is innovation. And then that will be a platform for us to also innovate better, to be able to serve our community better, uh, to present a better quality of our services. That is what innovation does, one of the things it does. And our work environment and the workplace now is, I tell you, when I come in and I see all this the design of colors out, 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 in, 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 and I saw all manners of badges on the floor, they don't look, more, they don't look any more like dirt in the place. They look more like making the place more fanciful. <laughs> I don't know. Some of you in your offices, I don't know whether you have brick wall uh, partition in your office. You may discover now that brick wall partition is no more good for this environment. And you have to remove those brick wall and put uh, transparent glasses there. And it will make your office more posh. Innovation. You have to create an environment that is, that is quite um, enhancing. Finally, on innovation, the advancements of technology. It will rapidly come from next year. For 2021, uh, 21 to 2023, will be a, a, I would say, technological revolution age. That's what you will see. Technological revolution age. Over the years, you have had issues like, you know, legal, legal questioning of uh, Facebook, legal interrogation of uh, YouTube. And the law are trying to, to regulate those institutions, but because of the complexities, we could not, uh, you know, no, no law globally can really, you know, uh, you know, codify laws to regulate them. However, they are breaching several laws. You will see what will happen in the next three years. Technology, we advance so much, but if you are a 21st century leader, you will acquire enough knowledge from what we are saying when you go out and develop it. You will be able to confront technological revolution and then leverage it to your advantage. That is a 21st century leader. And of course, it's also called a high impact leader. Collaboration, very quickly. Collaboration brings, it is bringing our synergies together to achieve the same aim joining forces together to achieve common goal. You must create an atmosphere in your industry where this is very, very easy and this is very, it's part of the values of your industry. In your team, everybody, you know, collaborates. Nobody hides anything that he has or he sees. Everybody is eager every day. Then your, your team members will leave the office and go home and be thinking about the problem of the office, how to solve it. Not because you told them to do that. 
but because you created the environment. So is the church. Church should be an ex- a, a place that people are excited to come. Church should be a place where people, you know, when the, when the leader tells them that, look, we're looking into this area, everybody will start to run. Leader is speaking. Different people are thinking differently. What the leader is saying, I can do this about it because I have this skill. Another one is saying, I can do this about it because I have this skill. Before you know it, they come together and they should be able to synergize. They should be, they should, you should have an environment that people are welcome to add values and add into your, your expertise. That is collaboration. Someone don't think that he is the most wise. No. There is a room for others, even the foolish one, which is the weakling, to still contribute the little that he has. And is that not the scriptures? Cooperation. Cooperation involves reasoning together. And I told you last week about, you know, you know God said in the book of um, Proverbs, come, let us reason together. But I'll give you some other things about this. It is co- cooperation, is reasoning together, bringing our reasoning together for common purpose. And every marriage needs it. Every church needs it. Every friendship needs it. Every industry needs it. I have to move fast now because I'm conscious of my time. And then one key thing I told you is that I, I gave you a scripture last week that Acts chapter 2 verse 44 says all the believers were together were in one in heart and mind and they had all things in common. And when you look at the scripture read it downwards, there was no needy persons among them. The, that is the false socialism, I could say. We are everyone who had need. Their needs were met by those who had surplus. I would give them now. But that is constructive. Then I talk about shareholders' engagement. <clears throat> Let me say this to you. What I will help us to understand today is that innovation, co- collaboration, shareholders' engagement, yeah, no, not innovation now, cooperation, collaboration, shareholders' engagement, they are elements that always give back to innovation, progressive innovation. Shareholders' engagement is, for the, fa- is the fact that organizations need to, to establish activities that every member of the organization will e- easily identify with. All right? And churches should do that. And the external stakeholders are, you know, the your people who are externally out, immediately out of your church or out of your organization, beginning from their families who are not part of your organization to your, their friends and then to your neighbors and the rest of them. You must have activities that will bring those people, the interests of those people <clears throat> into the church. They will come because you are doing something in line with their interests. And they will come. And in coming just for their interest, they will discover the values of the organization, and then they will discover your product, and then they will be, they will be wanting to contribute towards it. Stakeholders, you cannot talk about it. You cannot over, over, over speak about it. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 14, it says, they all join together constantly in prayer, along with the women. They all join together. You see, the activity was prayer, and it was all the stakeholders were engaged in the activity. This also, together jointly, leads to creativity. Creativity, when I was looking at creativity, what I was able to conclude about it is that it involves creating thinking, creative thinking. Creativity involves creative thinking. And creative thinking is enhanced by all what I've been telling you. An atmosphere where everybody matters. An atmosphere where everybody can speak without fear. An atmosphere where everybody can rub their minds together. And every, uh, an atmosphere where everybody is happy and nobody is afraid to make mistakes because he will not be validated for his mistake, but it will be helped. And then you have creativity. It involves thinking together. Creative thinking. Which leads to various adjustments of your ways of, la- of doing things. Creative thinking, thinking will challenge your norm and it will affect the no matter where you do things, you will have to adjust yourself in some ways. This can also achieve, it can be achieved by learning from other people. You will learn from other people, and then it will juggle your brain up into thinking. Okay, right, you can write this down. Creative thinking can achieve, can be achieved by learning from others and establish environment or establishing environment that encourages joint effort. That's what I've been talking about. We have people are encouraged and happy to freely contribute their skills and ideas. 
That's the bedrock of creative thinking. <clears throat> you can listen to this again and you get it. Is that not what the Bible calls in your mind? Look at the book of Revelation, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. That is, departure from norm. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the Bible tells you that a Christian must not follow the norm. This is how they do it. This is the way of the world. No, don't do that. And when you, do, when you don't do that, you have to depart from that, okay? And the way to do it is to renew your mind. Think about the old mistakes you have been doing. Depart from it and think about something better to do. If you are in a marriage and you are having to fight, 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 why did you marry then? You should have stayed to the loan. If you apply the scripture rightly, you will think about what is causing. So you have had times of happiness and joy before. Then what is wrong now? What is wrong? What are you doing now that is causing headache for you in your own house? You didn't, you didn't pay for headache when you paid for marriage. Departure from none. Renew your mind. Examine yourself, not others. Be willing to learn from others. Be willing to listen to others. Don't say that their claim is, is wrong. No. If they are saying that, your husband is saying that you, what you are doing, I don't like it. Know what he's saying. Or your wife is saying that to you. Listen. If he doesn't like it, then don't do it. What, is, what does it cost you to stop doing what somebody else didn't like? Who you have to work together? Did the Bible not say you cannot work together unless they agree? You cannot be praying and be destroying your prayer, my friend. Renew your mind. That is being creative, being innovative, creating an atmosphere that can enhance such. And then the Bible says what happened? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasure, pleasing, and perfect will. The Bible is so clear about it. It depends on the goggle you put on when you're reading it. And furthermore, Isaiah 118, come, let us reason together. Now, let me take you through this. Write this down. They are very brief. External factors that influence an organization, they span from political, economics, social, and technological challenges. The economic challenges can be internal and it can be external. And you see all these things that COVID-19 has, has affected all these areas. It caused the government to make decisions. Right now we are challenging in England our prime minister, what he said last, yeah, last week, and our parliament will be challenging him terribly. It has been all over the radio and television because the prime minister had divided the country into three tiers. And then they are telling him, what make me second tier, that others are one tier? What is the difference between me and them? What is the, how, how can I be third tier, the third tier three? And then all my industries are shut down. Is government going to give me money? Is going to pay all the, all the industries there? So they are making that claim. And then the people in the tier two are saying that, but, you know, we don't have COVID. It's not the whole of the region that have COVID. It's only one, one town had COVID. Can you now capital of So political problem is coming more. And then p political parties are now dividing. People have started telling the prime minister from the Conservative Party that we are going to rebel against you. And they are counting their numbers. Can you imagine a kingdom divided against itself? Can it stand? Political challenges, you cause it. What about economic challenges? Families who have been earning a lot before now are not able to bring in the same income anymore. What about the challenges that we give you? What about the social challenges? You know, the social challenges, government said that people should put on the, the face mask. Some people develop theories why face mask is not right. Can you imagine? And you go into the train, you see some people without face mask, and you have face mask. Social challenges. Some just believe, they just believe taboo. You know? And then the technology I told you a little bit about. Therefore, these are factors that affect you know, that influence 
an organization, which will demand your response as an organization to each of those influences. Now, let me give you again, I'll remind you again about the enablers of leadership in the 21st century. Number one is innovation, number two, collaboration, number three, stakeholders engagement, and then creativity. Let me just say this because of church and of course other organizations, because churches are the one you cannot have church margin. You can't have majors in churches, can you? You can't have it. But you have majors in companies, amen? A company, Acadia now that is going off, some people already are planning how they will share it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if one person cannot take it, two companies can come together and they can merge and they can take it. But when a church is going down, they leave it to die, natural death. That thought should change. Remember this, an organization in isolation cannot be effective. And that is the reason why it is very essential for every organization to have positive external relationship. You don't relate with people who are wasters of lives. Every human being needs to have positive external relationship with your organization or with yourself or with your institution. A collaboration of, thought of such involves building a good network with relevant institutions or people that will span across your geographical or your industrial line. Your network should be designed according, I would say, to your supply chain, and a little bit stretch beyond that to other institutions, but of like values, but of different products. Why? Because we learn from one another. Church leaders need to look at churches that are successful, sincerely successful, and look at what they are doing and copy it. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. One man cannot know everything all. You can learn from a, a young person as much as a young person can learn from you. Let me tell you something for the church. You must have a clear understanding of your external, external context. This enables you to use common goals to bring people together. And same thing with industry, irrespective of their global boundaries. If you are a person who decide to reach out to other cultures, you must decide to adopt in, with the culture and you must be ready to learn the values of the culture. You cannot take your culture into another culture and destroy the culture and try to try change that culture, you will fail. You must understand this. If our common goal is Christ, therefore, it doesn't matter. In our churches, people, race, culture, language, creed, male, female, young and old, there is room for all. To succeed, therefore, in, your, in this venture of leadership in this 21st century or end time, you need to, one, assess the strengths and weaknesses of your collaborators. Assess their strengths and weaknesses. Look at areas they are good. All these collaborators I have explained to you. If you are a married, married couple, you can look at other married couples who are successful in life and who are happy. You don't want to look at, if you are having a little settlement, you don't want to look at the one that they are fighting every day. Though if you look at the one they're fighting every day, you can only look at that to look at what is making them fight so that you make sure you don't repeat that in your, in your marriage relationship. Access their strengths and weaknesses. Identify the areas of your common interests with your collaborators. Number three, understand the approaches and the methods that your collaborators adopt to achieve their goals. And number four, you must be willing to depart from your norm. 
and adopt new approach so that you can get good results. I'm almost finished. Let's look at the advantage or advantages of collaborating, especially in the eternal context. It helps leaders to build greater awareness of events and ex experiences beyond their own organization. If you think that you are, achieve, you are, you are, you are very much in a, you are a great achiever, when you go into some other organization and see what they have achieved, you say, oh my, I thought we were. That's what it said to you. Between the years of 1984 and 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven on various occasions where he was shown global events that would lead up to the year of 2015. And in 1999, the Apostle was powerfully shown the coming calendar for the world. I want to understand that the first war was in heaven, the first victory was in heaven, and it takes the man of heaven to win the earthly battle. In December 2009, God instructed Apostle Alfred Williams to go into all the world and let them know that I am coming. Beloved, with this powerful instruction behind us, it is now time for us to arise, shine, and win every house for Jesus. Now is the time for the final preparation of the Bride of Christ. A final trumpet call to righteousness in this time that is running out before the rapture of the church. Join us on this dynamic campaign to reach every house in Britain. They need to hear the call. Who will tell them if we do not? This is the prophesied time of harvest. It is now time for us to win every house for Jesus. For more information, call 020 7635 0447 or visit cftchurches.org. The time has come to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon.